you got money, you should be feeling fine. But something is not quite working, and it's messing up your mind. I know it, ain't it, Butch? With your fancy suits and shoes, there's a name for your condition. It's called the Wall Street Blues. Yes, those young lawyer blues. <laughs> wondering why I'm late. <laughs> why are you late, Leslie? Well, I met this incredible fellow, and there was an immediate uh, explosion, and we ended up going over to his place and watching the sun come up. <laughs> Leslie, that's great. I know. <laughs> Leslie, I'm really happy for you, and the minute I finish this brief, you're in for a big hug. <laughs> <laughs> What's he like? What does he do? Oh, you'll love him. He's, he's socially aware. He loves his job. He teaches high school in Bedford Stuyvesant. Well, at least you don't have to worry about anybody stealing him. Good morning. Hi. Don't get nervous. I remember how I used to feel when I was a first year associate and an important partner walked in. I, I really, truthfully, don't want you to get the idea that I'm checking up on you. You are working, though, right? Good. Well, listen, uh, I want you all to take three now. Come on, Tucker, relax. Take three. <laughs> okay. I suppose you've all heard that I'm giving a party at my home this Friday night. <laughs> you can drop the cool facade. I'm inviting you. Oh. All right, all right, just simmer down. <laughs> I'm pretty darned excited myself. You know, this is the first party I'm giving since I've been made partner. Really... Thanks, Elliot. We're honored. Yes, I knew you would be. <laughs> well, at least you guys get to meet Jerry now. You're not taking a high school teacher to this party. Oh, come on, Sarah. If you like someone, who cares what he does? It matters enormously. You're judged on your work. You're judged on your appearance. So far, so good for me. <laughs> and perhaps most of all, you're judged on whom you're seen with. Well, then, Jerry's a perfect choice. He'll show everyone here that I have one small piece of life outside this firm. Who are you taking to the party, Tucker? Well, I have someone in mind. <laughs> Sarah, would you like to go to the party with me? I don't think so, Tucker. <laughs> but you know something? I really surprised myself. For a second there, I was actually tempted. And that's supposed to make me feel good? Yeah. It does. <laughs> uh, Mr. Marshall? Yes, Elliot. Um, excuse me, sir, but I I'm having a small gathering at my home this Friday night, and, well, I was wondering if you would do me the honor of attending, sir. Oh, that's very kind of you, but I thought I'd have a lazy weekend and not honor anybody. Oh. <laughs> Sir, uh, this, this won't be one of those high-pressure parties. I, I promise you, there won't be any really important people attending. Uh -huh. That's your selling point? A party for nobodies? Oh. <laughs> uh, may I put it another way? I would. Um, <laughs> sir, all of the associates will be there, and your presence would be an inspiration. That's very nice. So I know you've been to many parties in your oh, day, sir, but yes. if you could... Long time ago, though, many, many parties. I haven't ever told you about them. I, I don't know. Well, I can't think of that. <laughs> I was there on that famous occasion where Eleanor Roosevelt hula hooped. <laughs> Eleanor Roosevelt. 
Who knew who? <laughs> Crazy to stir. But you know, I think the greatest evening of them all was one evening when uh, little fella, begin the begin, Cole Porter. <laughs> he was, um, he sat at the piano and Lena Horne, the great Lena Horne, sang a love song. She was standing even closer to me than you are now. Lena Horne. Yeah. And when I went to say goodnight to her, she looked at me and she said, good bones. <laughs> I think it was a compliment. <laughs> And then there was Babe Ruth, ran into Babe Ruth one evening, he said, Emerson, I'm going to hit a home run for you tomorrow when I'm going to say that I did it for a little boy. <laughs> great memories, great parties. Do you think your party will, uh, will be anything like that? Oh, no, sir, it couldn't possibly. No. But there'll be plenty of good gin. Oh, yes, sir. I'll be there. <laughs> Listen, uh, I'm having a little party at my home this Friday, and I, I need a bit of help. You want to be your bartender? Yeah? Well, yes, but... Uh, hey, no problem. Just a minute, Johnny. Uh, there's one other problem that perhaps you can help me with. You see, the, uh, the young woman that I've been seeing isn't quite right to take to this party. Oh, yeah, that bagel lady. She's baking bagels to work her way through Juilliard. <laughs> At any rate, Johnny, you can understand why I, I, I want to give the best possible impression. Well, you want me to find your girl? You, shh, class. <laughs> Listen, Johnny, now, you know, I'm not sure if, if you know the kind of woman that I'm looking for, would you? <laughs> Johnny, well, what are you looking for? I'm looking for someone polished, elegant, intellectual, beautiful. Hey, wait a minute. I know this one who'll blow the socks off of everyone in the room. I could settle for that. Mm, this is delicious. My mother's recipe. Oh, it was nice of her to give it to you. Nice of her to come over and cook it. <laughs> She heard you were coming. She insisted. Oh, that's sweet. Well, I'll take more. <laughs> Called you last night. No answer. I don't mean to pry. Uh... All right. I work late at the office. You worked at 2 a.m.? 4 a.m. It's an old habit. College when I couldn't sleep. I'd get up and study. Now I work. Nothing ever changes, I guess, except when I studied, nobody was billed $75 an hour. <laughs> Speaking of rip-offs, uh, uh, there's this renters rally Friday night. Uh, my parents' apartment's being turned into a co-op. They're throwing everybody out. We're going to fight them. I could use a good attorney. What about the party? You said you'd come. The rally's 7.30. I'll finish there and hit the party. It should be fun for me. Seeing exploiters in their natural habitat. <laughs> like visiting some rich people's zoo. Uh, maybe you'd better not come to this party, Jerry. Why not? Because you have a big mouth. I have a big mouth? Are you crazy? Big mouth! Look who she's calling! Big mouth! You can stop being delightfully uninhibited for just a minute and listen to what I'm trying to say. Look, you have very different ideas on things. You look down on the people I work with, and you also like to argue. Yeah, so? This is the first party I've been invited to at the firm. And whether you approve or not, it's important to me what these people think of me. What do you care what those... I said it's important to me, okay? Look, I'm new there, Jerry. Everything I do, they're watching me, grading me, judging me. I'm just kind of hoping you'll watch what you say. You're asking me to watch what I say? And how you behave and to wear the gray suit, and you think you might get a haircut? Ah. <laughs> Come on. I'm just really scared about this party. I promise you'll be proud of me. I'll do everything I can to be an arrogant, avaricious, class-conscious reactionary. I'll be the envy of every woman at the party. <laughs> David Essex is on the fast track to fame. Zanko, will you get it? Sure thing, Mr. Benny. <laughs> hey, come on.
Come on in. Hi. <laughs> hey, this is interesting. I didn't know you two were getting it on. We just happened to have gotten here at the same time. My date's coming later. I'm here alone. Hey, well, listen, I'll cover for you, okay? If anybody asks, I'll tell them your date's in the john throwing up. <laughs> I hate being the first ones at a party. I should have walked around the block three times. It wouldn't have helped. I did that. Tucker, can I ask you to do me a favor? Uh-huh. Jerry's gonna feel really out of place here. Do you think you could try to make him feel more comfortable? Sure. Oh, thank you. I can't tell you how important this is to me. Well, look, don't worry, okay? If things get really, really bad, I'll do my Judy Garland impression. You do a Judy Garland impression? Well, to do it right, I need 300 munchkins and a shriveled witch. <laughs> oh, hello, good to see you. Oh, it's you. Don't go, I'm nervous. What are you nervous about? Because hundreds of things could go wrong. Uh, people can have a bad time, and I'm responsible. Now, if, if this party dies, they could not like me. They don't sweat it, huh? Oh, thanks, Johnny. You know, somehow I, I, I find it easy opening up to you. I, I, I guess it's because your opinion of me doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> Danko, where is my date? I should have never left that to you. If that girl shames me through crudity or, or awkwardness or, or homeliness... Uh... Oh, hi. Yvonne Winslow, Elliot Streeter. How do you do? Oh, uh... Uh, may I take your coat? Please. Uh. Oh, you gave me a chill. <laughs> Tucker, Leslie, I'd like you to meet my fiance. <laughs> Sitting in the middle of the front row was Sir Winston Churchill, so familiar with his Shakespeare that he recited the entire text of Hamlet word for word with the actors. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Gee, it must have been such a thrill knowing Churchill personally. Yes, it must have been, mustn't it? Yes. <laughs> Richard Burton told that story on Merv Griffin. That's where I heard it. <laughs> You need a refill. Thank you, thank you. What an elegant, beautiful lady. I can compliment you. Thank, <laughs> thank you. you. Something to use it? No, no. <laughs> Hey, here's Sarah. Hi, Sarah. Hi, oh. Tucker. <laughs> Hello, Sarah. Elliot Streeter, our host for this evening. I'd like you to meet my date, Theorcus Papadopoulos. He just flew in from Crete. Oh, this is a pleasure. Thank you. Because I was just reading the other day in Fortune magazine how That the Papadopoulos line was third in the super freighter tonnage this year. Uh, yeah, well, <laughs> congratulations, Theo. Uh, I really want to congratulate... Oh, and uh, by the way, we've got plenty of olives. <laughs> A shipping magnate. Jerry is going to hate it here. Would you stop worrying? I, t I told you I w I'd make him feel right at home. Oh, there he is. Oh, I know him so well. He's tense already. Help me out here, Tucker. Would you just... Hey, Jerry, Tucker Kerwin. Thank you. Why is he hugging me? Come on in and meet the gang. Here we saved your seat. Scoot over, Thearchus. <laughs> You go and get Jerry some grub. We'll just keep him entertained, okay? Uh, one grub. <laughs> so Leslie says that you're you're into a hot renders dispute or something. Yeah, I really would rather not talk about it. It gets me a little steam. Well, maybe maybe we could give you some help. You know, we're allowed to do some outside work for no fee if it's for a good cause. No, really, I I, I rather not. Oh. A new arrival, I see. Oh, Elliot Streeter, our host, and Leslie's boss. This is Jerry Davis, Leslie's date. Oh, how do you do? Uh, what do you do, Mr. Davis? I teach. Oh, really? I thought of becoming a teacher once, <laughs> till I found out what they made. <laughs> hey! Elliot didn't mean it. Oh, I guess I'm just a little upset because of this Renner's dispute. Oh, well, listen, I know uh, exactly what you're talking about. You better watch out, though. If you're not careful, those renters will take you to the cleaners. <laughs> I'm with the renters. Oh, uh, really? Why? Why? Hey, how about those guests? <laughs> out of the blue, owners are turning apartments into co-ops. People were thrown into the streets, oh, helpless. Well, I'm sure that happens sometimes. But what about the owner's side? Now, I know it's not popular to consider them. But I've seen what they have to go through. People just skipping out on their rent. 
Disgustingly filthy ovens, drains packed with hair. I can't Mr. believe this guy. I'm saying my parents have nowhere to live and you're talking about filthy ovens and hairy drains? <laughs> I have to say that your parents' plight is really not the owner's responsibility. Well, it should be, you son of a... Uh, well... And a lullaby, sing it with me, please. His happy little birds fly beyond the rainbow. Why, oh, why can I? <laughs> That's Judy Garland. Uh -huh. <laughs> you know what this Cretan just said? Oh, you're talking about my island? <laughs> <laughs> are not numbers and ledges, they're people. And what are apartment owners? Duck pate? No. <laughs> Vultures. Vultures, now look here. Now you look here! Right. Gentlemen. Who is this guy? Because I haven't really finished Tell him who this guy is. Yes, sir. Mr. Marshall, founder and owner of the firm that employs me, Jerry Davis. Jerry Davis, how'd you do? I couldn't help uh, overhearing your conversation. You've got guts, my boy, you've got spirits. I think you're perfectly right in what you say. Thank you. Absolutely right. Uh, I was just playing the devil's advocate. Now, yeah. <laughs> uh, with this problem, this problem, I think if the city were to give alternative um, accommodation to all your tenants... Psh, psh, what's that mean? <laughs> you said, psh, what's that mean? <laughs> Don't you talk to me like that. <laughs> if I were a younger man, I'd get someone to throw you out. <laughs> Give me, give me my hat and coat. Thank you. Give me my hat and coat. I'm sorry, Leslie. I can't handle this. I, I, I just can't stand it here. What? These people won't think the same. And why not? They are the same. What are you? I'm a lawyer. What are you? I'm a lawyer. What are you? I'm a lawyer. What are you? I'm a prostitute. <laughs> Too tied up with the guy who bought the hooker. Yeah, it did take us out of the spotlight. This is some place. I've never seen such a fancy. I mean, that lobby. Sell that lobby, you could feed the world. Hey, it's not my lobby. I just work here. If it was, I'd sell it. I'd feed the world. What are you doing here, Jerry? Thought you wanted to be alone. I thought we left things unresolved. Oh, I don't know. See you around sometime, maybe, as a uh, form of resolution. You want to keep seeing each other? Let me, let me think about that. You bet. How about you? Yeah. I thought we were beginning to enter that delicate stage where I could ask you to make pillows for my apartment. Well, then what's the problem? I make great pillows. The problem is this place and what it represents. It makes me crazy. So what do you want me to do? Give it all up? Okay, sure. Why not? I mean, it's only been seven years of schooling and you seem like a fun guy. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I'm not going to apologize for my job. I'm sorry, I'm really sorry, but I'm not. And if you can't live with that, then make your own damn pillows. You can't just walk out without talking to me. Why? I don't know where the elevators are. 
It's the truth. I just can't handle it. It won't work, Leslie. Okay. It's been really good knowing you, and I hope you feel the same. Can I get back to you on that? Take care of yourself. I needed Judy Garland imitations. <laughs> Just what I needed. <laughs> Somewhere over the rainbow blue. Coming up, the chase team sets out to scuttle a racetrack scam. And Christy Love encounters a killer believed long dead. The heat is on when USA's crime busters hit the streets. Next. Night, Mr. Walters. Uh. 